if a tube uh, leak in major water entered our system, what is the process to use for dehydration? Open the chiller up, let it all drain. <laughs> we got to handle the refrigerant. So that, that's mostly a joke. Um, we've got to get that contaminated refrigerant out of there. Granted, more than likely when I've had this, what usually happens is the refrigerant, specifically if it's a high pressure, if it's a low pressure, not so much, but a high pressure, the refrigerant will push its way in because usually the refrigerant's at a higher pressure than your loop, not always, but usually. And so that'll force its way into the loop. You'll think you'll have a ton of air in the loop. You'll spend days trying to bleed it all. It's actually refrigerant that you're bleeding, not air. And after you get done with all the bleeding and you think you finally figured out, but you haven't figured out where the bleed, the air came from. That's when that, that's about the time you realize, Oh, Oh snap. Um, we had a, we had a condenser bust or evaporator bust, something like that. Right. So, um, once you mitigate the refrigerant, if you have any refrigerant in there at all, um, yeah, drain it down. Now, it depends on how long it's been able to sit in there. So how long of a span did it go? Some of these cases, I've seen it where they literally allowed the whole chiller to fill up to the compressor and it sat there for a period of time. My period of time, I mean weeks to months. Like there's been some of these cases I've, I've seen where, yeah. So in that case, uh, your only option is a full teardown. Don't, you're not going to get that machine back online. Not going to happen. So at that point, you go through a full teardown, you're going to overhaul that entire compressor. Uh, you're probably going to have to get into the heat exchangers and clean it up. And you've got a really, really difficult world ahead of you. And you need to bring people in who know how to do this. Uh, that would be your best next step. Now, let's say you caught it relatively quickly and you've got water in your heat exchanger. Things haven't been in there for very long, let's say hours to days at most. And um, now you, you responded quickly. Well, there is still some risk, but there's a chance that there's not extreme corrosion yet. So you're going to have to retube either way. Um, you're going to have to at minimum retube because you've got to do that to fix the leak. If you had a leak bad enough to cause that, I don't recommend just plugging the tubes. Now, if you caught the leak prior to um, the, the leak becoming uh, it completely rupturing, where you say you caught it through an eddy current or something, then you can plug the actual holes, which is then getting a plug, putting some uh, refrigerant sealer. So one I like in a case like that would be, say, 515. Put that on your plug, shove that into, um, into the... the uh, the tube on either side, I, I, I personally prefer to clear the line out of, of water as much as I can ahead of time, try to dehydrate it. So if it's not too bad, you can do that. Then you get stuck with mitigating what water got into it. So now we're talking about, say, a low pressure machine. Because um, if it was a high pressure, you would just be losing refrigerant. And you'd notice you have a low charge one day. You pull the end bells off, do some leak searching. Okay, we found this particular tube. Uh, is the one leaking, but water hadn't made it into the chiller. If you have a low pressure, though, that's exactly what's going to happen. That water is going to start seeping in. Now, let's say this happened at a very small scale, and you had that tube leak. It wasn't severe, um, but I, I, I noticed you you did say major water leak. Okay, so we're talking major. You're, you're talking a retube and probably an overhaul, but for everybody else, what you can do is once you plug the tube and you've got a low pressure, it means you've got water in the, in the system now, you're going to, to want to do a recovery and try to clean that refrigerant. And that means either doing an on-site recovery process. Uh, you, you could yeah try to do a reclaim or, or let's see, not a reclaim. I'd be a recycling process on-site. That'd be one option. Uh, somebody like RefTech has some really good equipment to be able to do that on site. In some cases, uh, like for myself, I've even gone to the point of let's just go ahead and replace this refrigerant. So we pulled it all out. Then we had to put the chiller through a dehydration process. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. 
You can either um, do a nitrogen purge to dehydrate that way, or uh, you can use, say, like you can just do it through evacuation, do it doing triple evacs. And if you, depending on the scale of the machine, using a cold trap can be really, really beneficial. So a cold trap is a big cylinder uh, that the the vapors coming through the uh, the hoses go around the larger part of the cylinder. And then inside the cylinder, we have another interior chamber that we fill with dry ice. Uh, and some people I've heard use antifreeze. Uh, another one is uh, uh, denatured alcohol. Anyway, we'll fill that around with the, the dry ice, lock it all together. And what that does is instead of the uh, all the moisture coming through into your pump and uh, contaminating your pump very quickly, it collects there in the cold trap first. And it keeps the pump oil uh, in a more pristine state, helps you get deeper, faster, longer, yada, yada. So those are the two primary methods. You, I personally am a huge fan of a nitrogen purge. Okay. And then this is something where you set your tanks up, you get a trickle purge going, you flow through the whole machine into the condenser. I usually go into the top of the condenser and then my uh, liquid charging point at the bottom of the evaporator. I'll open that up or I'll do vice versa. Let it come back out the top of the uh, condenser and come in. Uh, it just kind of depends on the circumstances. But by doing that and just doing a very slow trickle trickle purge, almost like a, 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 a brazing purge uh, type of CFM. It's not a whole lot, but you do that for several hours with a tall 300 cubic tank. And uh, that will uh, that'll do a huge service to getting that machine really dehydrated in addition to pulling an evacuation. So um, anyway, to your point specifically, major leak, major water in the system. Um, my, my opinion, some people might tell you just plug the tube. I personally like if it's, if it's major, we're not talking just minor leak. If it's a major leak, we just need to go ahead and look at a retube. And if you're going to go as far as doing a retube, and if that water got up to that compressor, like genuinely filled the chiller, then um, I overhaul for sure. Like I would really, really encourage that in a situation like that. Uh, because part of the thing is if you try to skip any of those things and then you try to turn it on anyway, you only make your overhaul situation way more expensive and worse. So not only are you likely to tear up more bearings, tear up your seals, tear up your impeller, you could also uh, mess your motor up as well. Whereas with the state it's at, everything probably needs to be serviced and cleaned, but you may not have to have the motor rewound. Okay. You may not, um, some of your bearings may not be in that bad of condition. Doesn't mean you can't replace them, but you're not risking the impeller. Uh, making any touchdowns anywhere it's not supposed to and, and tearing the impeller up. And like, those are the consequences of, oh, let's just see what happens. Right. And now your hundred thousand dollar overhaul turns into a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollar overhaul. If it's even worth overhauling, depending on how severe it is. So just things to consider. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's where I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 